Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is January 6th and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery because the Pacific Northwest up here, strong storm moving across the Gulf of Alaska. We don't have any strong storms in our forecast here, but we do have a few systems that are going to try to brush by here. They're fairly weak over the next few days. But the big story here is that we're going to be drying things out across much of the West Coast of North America. And then we're going to take a look at what potentially is a colder period coming in through the second half of January. I'll show you the latest on that as we go through the video here this morning. Taking a look at right now, you can see some of the cascades and the higher terrain of British Columbia. Nice and sunny out there once you get above uh, some of the lower clouds. Western Washington, Seattle Metro kind of socked in there. But the Willamette Valley doing a bit better. You can see that there is some sunshine out there for the Oregon coast, Washington coast, and even some portions of eastern Washington breaking out a little bit there. And we we still have some showery activity here moving through eastern Oregon as this system continues to slide off into the southeast. Look at that Mount Rainier, nice and glorious sunny this morning. And I get a lot of questions here about which is the best weather station to buy and the Tempest weather system is a great one to do so. Uh, you can see everybody out here across the Seattle Metro, for example. There's Willamette Valley and the Portland Metro there as well. Uh, yeah, very impressed with this weather station. Unless you don't want to spend uh, thousands of dollars on a more professional system, this is really the one to get. And the smartphone app is great. The desktop app is great. Stores all the data for you in the cloud. Very accessible. Highly recommended. And you can see here, UV index starting to pick up here. Ashford, Washington. So there's a little bit of sunshine to be had out there. And you can click update there and see the it detects solar radiation and brightness also. The wind updates every few seconds. And store, again, stores all the data for in the cloud. Now, Spokane National Weather Service talking about sunshine for some areas on Monday. It's that time of year where you got to get excited whenever you do see the sun. Don't take it for granted if you do happen to get a little bit of that sunshine action here, western Washington. And again, the Willamette Valley doing a little bit better there. But now let's take a look at where we are right about now. So you can see some of that precipitation still sliding through eastern Oregon, moving down across Nevada and Utah. Get a little bit of a break as we go through the day tomorrow, but this next system will be coming here for western BC. And we're not looking at heavy precipitation amounts. It's eventually going to pivot down across western Washington. Doesn't show much for Oregon with that round. That system quickly moves out. And then we got one more system rolling through here. But again, these are very weak light precipitation makers, but it could bring you know some mountain snow there we'll, we'll continue to watch and see just what that is going to bring we'll look at some more details on that as far as how much snow is going to fall across the higher terrain as we go uh, towards the end of the week here one more week brush of a system here as we go through the weekend here but again no big wind storms and these are not big precipitation makers and you can see that reflected here in last night's European five-day precipitation anomaly. Sharp cutoff there right across western BC, North Vancouver Island. And drying out here for the west coast of North America, at least relatively speaking. And look at the 16-day on this morning's GFS hot off the presses. Again, sharp cutoff there right across western British Columbia with well below normal amounts here across, uh, you know, BC, Washington, Oregon, and California. Now, what everybody wants to talk about here is what is going on through the extended. And I'm just going to let everybody know here that we're looking way off into the future. So there is huge disagreement on what exactly is going to happen here and how this is going to unfold. At least that's the way we should be approaching this. But if we go ahead and take a look at the 12Z GFS versus uh, the, the 06Z GFS. So this is last night on the right. This is this morning's on the left. We'll put this all the way out. And you can see what's going on here as we go, you know, this is 200 hours out and it's still hardly a sign of any Arctic air. And we scroll out 240, this is 10 days out. So you can kind of see why we should not be confident in any kind of a forecast just yet. And you can see the differences between the 06Z and the 12Z, much more Arctic air on the last night's run versus uh, this morning's, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, but you can see the Arctic air eventually arrives here. But again, you're looking at over 300 hours out. Right now, we're just kind of looking at a pattern change. The model's pointing at some colder air coming across Western Canada, potentially including the Pacific Northwest at times. I'll show you some of the other weather models here in a moment, but this is the GFS last night. This is the average of all 30 ensemble members. So Again, 5,000 feet shows you the Arctic air and how it's moving around fairly well. And we're going to scroll off again. We're going to look in 10 plus days out here. So you got to take anything you see here with a grain of salt. But it also shows that cooler pattern setting up. So right now we're just on the watch there for the second half of January to see what is to come. Things will be breaking down day by day. 
If we look at the Canadian, uh, this is uh, yesterday afternoon's run as well. We'll scroll all the way out 10 plus days and you can see that signal also showing up. It kind of favors the east uh, slopes of the Rocky Mountains there, which would keep the majority of that cooler air from getting out into the Pacific Northwest. So you got to take that into account as we watch over the next few days as well. This is yesterday afternoon's European. Again, scrolling 10 plus days out kind of shows that signal being a little bit east of the Rockies with the cooler air. Uh, but again, way too early to get into any details on that. Now, look at the artificial intelligence European model. Since we're weather weenies and we are gluttons for punishment here, and we want to take a look at every single model and scroll out as far as we possibly can, you see some of that Arctic air, again, favoring east slopes of the Rockies, but that doesn't mean some cooler air won't be making its way into the Pacific Northwest. But again, we'll watch to see how that trends and evolves over the next few days. Now, a recent uh, La Nina update here, you can see November checked in at negative 0.4. So that means it may be very difficult for us to get technically officially into La Nina conditions. You need five running months of negative 0.5 or more. And it's going to be difficult because December is probably going to drop below that threshold, but then you need to keep that going on in through the early spring. And that just may not happen. But um, we'll take a look here at what the most recent uh, Nino 3.4, again, negative um, 0.7. So last uh, week it was negative 1.1. So uh, technically a weak La Nina. Is the atmosphere really reflecting a weak La Nina? That is up for some debate. Taking a look at the extended forecast, Quileute, last night's European, you can see uh, there is some potential here for uh, maybe a stronger system as we go through the second half of January, but who knows at this point. No ensemble agreement right now. We're not too worried about any big widespread windstorms or anything like that. Astoria, same thing, looking 15 days out, nary any sign of a gust. Now, taking a look at the avalanche forecast by zone, just a reminder, Northwest Avalanche Center, check this out before you go. You can see Mount Hood, still some moderate. There's still some considerable across the Cascades. And snowpack not doing bad as well. A lot of areas above average, especially portions of Oregon. And you can see some of the Idaho Panhandle, not bad. A little bit worse here as you go over towards uh, some of the Rocky Mountains of Montana. Now, 6 to 10 day, uh, kind of a near normal broad brush there, near normal precipitation below normal here for the Pacific Northwest. You got to go over the central portion of the country to get above. But yeah, this is reflected and shouldn't be any surprise as of what we just looked at with some of the weather models. Now look at this, the Climate Prediction Center also starting to bring a little bit chillier air in here for the Pacific Northwest. Is that a sign of that Arctic air through the extended possibly? We'll just continue to watch that day by day and the below normal signal continues. Now, if we look way out into uh, the fantasy land here, I'm going to put this into motion. This is the weekly as it go out 46 days. You can see the European again kind of showing that pattern change of some cooler weather they're setting up over Western Canada. And then maybe hanging on as we go through the early portion of February. So maybe we'll get more than one chance at some colder air making it into the Pacific Northwest. Who knows? Take a look at the CFS daily. Uh, again, at 5,000 feet, you can see the signal there as we go through the second half of January and maybe hanging on as we go into the early portion of February there as well. Um, look at Bellingham. So this goes all the way out here. This is the European. We're going out about 15 days. This is about to the 20th. And you can see some of these members showing up with some um, cooler solutions, let's say. And, and some of the ensembles dropping down into the 20s here. But again, we're just kind of on wait and see mode to see what is actually going to be coming. We have plenty of time to worry about that. But it, it, admittedly, it is kind of fun being a weather weenie, just kind of watching to see how this evolves. Uh, looking at Spokane, for example, you can kind of see the cooler weather showing up as we go way off into the future, almost two weeks out there also. So anyway, um, be sure to check back tomorrow. We'll take a look at the latest um, and see just where where things are going to lead us as we go through the extended forecast. But anyway, Anyway, um, hopefully you get a bit of sunshine out there today and we'll continue to break things down. Click like and subscribe and I will talk to you guys tomorrow.